this coming Sunday, we're playing Miami of Ohio Red Hawks outdoors at Soldier Field. That's going to be really important for us. Tonight, the Fighting Irish take on the Miami Red Hawks. One, two, three, four. Miami Notre Dame rivalry, it's intense. It's as intense as you get. Final score in Oxford, Miami beats the Fighting Irish. There's time for us to still be a great team. Enjoy the experience of being here, but what a great experience it would be with a victory. My name's Sam Calabrese. I'm a senior defenseman on the Notre Dame hockey team. And we're here at South Park in Park Ridge, Illinois. This is where I learned to play hockey. In the summer, this is a football field out here. But as soon as it starts to get cold, you'll see the grounds crew just spraying giant hoses on it. So whenever you saw that, all the kids around the neighborhood got really excited knowing that I should be ready pretty soon. He liked skating because he liked the speed, but then once he was in hockey skates and he started really skating fast, he adored it. I'd come out here after school with my brother and we'd play for hours. My mom would bring us food for dinner and um, you know we'd play through the night. Sometimes I'd go back and I'd see if he was too cold and he'd say, no, I want to stay, bring me back hot chocolate. We didn't really use nets out here, we'd use cones as goals. It was all about passing and working in small areas. I think everyone probably starts the game playing outside, whether it's in your backyard or a neighborhood ball field or even on the street in some instances. But I remember we used to play for hours on end. I remember there's no, there's no pressure, there's no stress about it. It was just you're going out there and having fun. Saturdays and Sundays, spend you know six hours there with the, all your buddies and order pizza in between and all that stuff. So a lot of time playing outside. Not playing hockey, you're just, you're just doing what you love, I guess you could say. You're just, enjoying the weather and your friends. It's crisp, hard ice, that pond ice you have, it's not like indoor ice. You know, just the joy of being able to fool around and do whatever you want, that's what reminds me of outdoor hockey. You know, it's just something you grow up learning how to do and you know, it's to go back to your roots, like that's pretty cool. Blue again, let's go Blue, let's go, let's not stop, let's go. This coming Sunday, we're playing Miami of Ohio Red Hawks outdoors at Soldier Field and that's gonna be uh, really important for us. Let's go. For Notre Dame, it's gonna be our first. You know, I think for us it'll be special in that regard, especially being in Chicago and Soldier Field. You know, that's probably like our, our home away from home. Me being from Chicago, you know, playing out in Soldier Field is something I never could have dreamed of. I'm a hockey player and, uh, you know, I dreamed of playing football there, but to be playing hockey there this Sunday, it's going to be a really cool experience and something that I'll never forget. My name is Dave Gilbert. I started here in 1998 and I am the equipment manager. This week is preparation for our first outdoor game and kind of a big deal as far as unveiling the new helmet. Football moved to these last year, so we're gonna stick with the Notre Dame brand and, and we're gonna unveil these on Sunday outside and then we're gonna roll with these moving forward. I think this is going to be a shock. I'm not sure people have been waiting for us to unveil this. I think debuting it outside on this stage is the right event to do it on, and I'm actually curious to see what the feedback's going to be. We're just going to get packed up here. We're heading to Miami, Ohio for our conference game on Friday night, and then we're going to head right to Chicago for a Soldier Field uh, game on Sunday afternoon. Boys pack their own stuff. They're going to load the bus, and then we're going to get on the road. This weekend we knew was the biggest weekend of the year and it was uh, a make or break weekend in my opinion. 
you know, we were looking forward to these big games at the end of the year that were going to matter, you know, and when the points came down to the crunch time. We knew that this was a big series for us, not only for conference play, but for NCAA tournament eligibility. We feel like we control our own destiny. I wouldn't have it any other way, and I don't think any other guy in this locker room have any other way, too. I should be about right here, cutting this off. There's no worse feeling than having your rivals beat you twice on one weekend. For that to happen, it would pretty much ruin the whole experience of playing outdoors, I think. It's going to be an interesting scenario that's going to come out of this, and I'll be curious to see how it all works out. Miami Notre Dame rivalry, it's intense. It's as intense as you get. You know, it's just two different mindsets, I feel like, with both teams. Every year, you know, we're always battling for the top position between them usually, and we know a lot of their guys, you know, we've played with them in the past. Well, they've obviously got a great program over there, and we're trying to prove that we can battle and compete with them. We know we're going into a very tough venue. We're going into play the number one team in our conference right now. You know, it's a team that we always have a great time playing, and on the hockey side of things, it's a big deal to us. From an on-ice perspective, it's probably the toughest physically series that we have in the CCHA, and it's been like that since I've been at Notre Dame. They always play us tough and physical and very explosive team, so we got our hands full, but uh, we're looking forward to the challenge. Live from Steve Cady Arena, inside the Goggin Ice Arena in Oxford, Ohio. We're, we're yeah, flying yeah, here about 9.30. Tonight, the Fighting Irish take on the Miami Red Hawks in the first of a two-game series. Miami has dominated the series recently, so the Irish have their work cut out for them. It really doesn't matter what happened in the past. It, it comes down to these last few weekends of the year. You want to enjoy the experience. This is what you play for in February. We've had our highs and lows, but we have a chance this weekend to set us up well for the rest of the season and the playoffs. This is what you wait for, for these type of moments. Every way you look at it, this weekend's going to be huge. Let's play on the edge, but let's not cross over. All right, let's have a great first time. Here we go, boy. One, two, three, march. The Fighting Irish in their road blue sweaters with the classic gold helmet with the white face mask. The teams come to the center circle. Anders Lee digs in. The puck has been dropped, and away we go. CCHA action from Oxford. It's the Irish and Miami. For your road period, your first period, you want to come out. You know, you don't want to give up any momentum goals early on. You don't want their crowd to get into it. Hip check! You know, I thought we played a pretty good period. Come on, get in there! We had a couple good scoring chances hit the post. We had an empty nutter that bounced over Rusty's stick. First two periods were just kind of back and forth, and then 10 second mental lapse. Back to Spinell, one timer score. Things happen quickly in that building, and you know I really think they get that home ice advantage every time they play there. They have a, a great building, and they have a great fan support and student section. You always have to be ready because that momentum, as soon as they get the first one, um, they're coming for that second. Here come the Hawks again, two on one. Perlman, right wing side, hold, shoot, score. There's definitely no doubt in our minds, third period, if we're down a goal, down two goals, that we have the capabilities of coming back. Two shots, two goals. Call me up, Winston. You know, I was just telling the guys, you know, it's going to take two shots. That's all it is. It's simple. The first two periods, we didn't play that well. We played OK, but uh, you're not going to beat a team like Miami by playing OK. F2, get up. Hey, F2, get up. In the third period, I thought we stepped it up a little bit. Fogarty skates into the Miami zone, right wing side. He'll cut in front, back end shot. He scores! <laughs> Stephen Fogarty scores for the Irish, and Notre Dame closes to within 2-1. to one. Let's go now. You know, we had the goal with four minutes left, and then it pulled me. We had some pressure down in their zone. Kind of race to rest, but in the right circle, a shot and a save by McKay. Might have got him in the helmet. Had a couple good chances, you know, it just didn't go in. You know, we knew we could play with them. It's just those couple bad bounces, and, you know, it's tough playing on the road in the CCHA. Four seconds left, and that will do it. Final score in Oxford, Miami beats the Fighting Irish 3-1. to one. You know, we had a span of 45 seconds where we lost that game. And, uh, you know, that's just the way hockey works.
those are the kind of games that we have to learn how to win if we want to become a championship team where maybe you don't get as many opportunities, but you make the most out of them when you have them. We have to make sure that focus becomes the key word of the day for the next 40 hours. Because the three points on Sunday are as important as the three points were tonight. So let's hustle up. Let's get out of here as quickly as possible. All right, so let's move. I think anytime you lose a game, especially a tough one like we did, going on a bus ride is the last thing you want to do. They have to bus to Chicago after that Miami game. It, it was definitely a grind. I mean, no one likes to lose, so I don't think anyone was going to be happy after that game. It gave us time to, you know, kind of reflect on what we did good, what we did bad, let us focus on what we needed to do to win. The guys were trying to get the game in the back of their mind so they could start focusing on Sunday. This week was really unique because we had to play the same team in two different venues, two different cities. Logistically, that comes with traveling in between the cities, checking into two different hotels, you know, and setting up in two different arenas. Our bus ride was definitely tough getting in that late, but those guys are definitely the unsung heroes. With practice coming around at one o'clock on Saturday, didn't leave us a whole lot of time to get that set up, so we want to get things ready to go so when the team walked in at noon, we were good to go. You can hook the elbows on the, on the bar. The staff is professional and they want us to be the best players they, that we can be, and being in that type of environment is helpful for our team's success, and obviously plays a big factor in just getting better every day. So what do you think? Are you thinking the helmet in the cubby hole? Here at Notre Dame, I think that you want to make sure that you hold yourself accountable for your job. You're representing Notre Dame, you're representing our student athletes, you're representing our program. For them to take those extra hours to put our stuff away so we can get that extra sleep, and it means a lot and it, and it helps our team be put in the best position to win. Everyone's sacrificing something. It's all in the ultimate effort to be the best team that we possibly can be. We sacrifice for each other and for the ultimate goal. Thanks, Rixie. Thanks, Rixie. Thanks, Gilly. Thanks, Gilly. This locker room's too big. Talking. Seeing the locker room set up kind of built the anticipation even more for the game. Oh, it's Christmas! It's Christmas! And we were finally at Soldier Field, and the game was just getting closer and closer. Dude, Mike's gonna be this is the tunnel Mike Brown ran in after he had that interception. <laughs> All the guys when we kind of got to Chicago on Saturday, was it was going to be cool, but I think it hit us when we saw the, actually the rink inside the stadium and how cool it really was. I think it really hit everyone like this is going to be a pretty cool experience. <laughs> when we arrived at Soldier Field, it's really cool to see the Blackhawks out there practicing, you know, being a huge Blackhawks fan. The Blackhawks were practicing, which was really cool, and you got to see guys you grew up idolizing. And then being able to go out and practice on our own, and just have fun and enjoy playing hockey and, and doing what you love. Get loose here, we're getting going here. It's quick, inside edge, let's go! Zigzag, let's go, zigzag here. Quick, 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 quick. Stepping on the ice at Soldier Field was awesome. Here we go, here we go. To be in hockey equipment and have that fresh Chicago breeze blown in your face and you realize you're playing outdoors and uh, it's gonna be a great weekend. Keep that puck going, good. Everyone's excited at that point, so all the frustration from the night before is kind of dissipated. I've actually made a conscious effort this past year to try to be more engaged with our players. So let's have some fun here. White's over here, Snow's over here. It was great the way uh, Coach handled it. He just kind of let us, after a few drills, he just said, go and have some fun. Oh, yeah. The best part of coaching is the relationship that you establish with the players. That was an opportunity for them to maybe a little, relax a little bit and actually experience what it was like to play the game the way it was originated outside and, you know, hopefully they had some fun. Ah! Ultimately, that's what the experience was about, is having fun and, you know, playing the game we love. That little session at the end of the practice really boosted us, you know, kind of forget about Friday and focus on the game Sunday because we knew that was the most important game of the season. Sunday, you know, the day's finally there. 
And welcome to Soldier Field in Chicago. The Fighting Irish getting set to take on the Miami Red Hawks. You're playing one of your biggest rivals outdoors, one of the greatest stadiums in the world. It is the first outdoor game in the Division I era for the University of Notre Dame. Enjoy the experience of being here, but what a great experience it would be with a victory. Then all of a sudden you could talk about it. That's your mindset is, you know, you have to win this game. To get those three points, we're, we're going to be crucial. Our Lady, Queen of Victory, pray for us. Go, boys, go. Okay, what do you say your boys? Outdoor <laughs> hockey? Embrace the situation. Here we go, boys. I shot three. One, two, three. Hush. Let's go, boys. Boys, here we go. One, two, ready, aim. Walking out on Sunday was a pretty neat experience. You know, you got 25 of your best buddies going out to play a hockey game outside in front of 40, 45,000 people. It was pretty amazing. Just the culmination of realizing that it was finally here and just a humbling experience being able to wear the Irish jersey for their first outdoor game. The guys walked out of that tunnel and I saw those helmets. I mean, I knew it was going to be pretty special, but I got chills. Putting on that gold helmet for the first time, I uh, definitely had the goosebumps. You know, it's, it symbolizes what this university is all about, excellence. That's where our uniforms need to be, you know, and I think the, the Golden Dome and the Golden Dome that we wear should represent the same thing, and that's excellence. We have sunshine and temperatures in the mid-30s for this matchup. The Irish looking for a big victory today here at Soldier Field. I think it was during the National Anthem that I realized that it's awesome, but it's still a hockey game that we, we must win. I think Saturday we got all the jitters out and stuff, and Sunday I think we were really focused on winning that game because we knew how important it was. The puck has been dropped, and the first ever outdoor game in the Division I era of the University of Notre Dame is underway. Get up there, get up there! The Irish will keep the pressure on. Puck is now swept to the right side, and a boarding call coming up against Notre Dame. Key moments in that game were being able to kill penalties. And now the Irish have to kill off a five-minute power play. Over the past couple weeks, we've really struggled in that area. So to finally be able to execute. A shot taken, and it's blocked. And, you know, get that feeling of killing that five-minute major. It's like, all right, you know, this is the team we can be. Killing that five-minute penalty off, and then getting that first goal. Mario putting that in. Great setup by Rusty. Rust has it. He'll walk in front. Stick handles to Lucia. He scores! Obviously, it's always nice to score, and especially in a big game like that, especially since we need to win. So it was nice to get the guys rolling, and I really didn't do much. I just kind of had to put it in. Notre Dame strikes first. Really just set the tone for the rest of the game that, you know, this was our game. We were in control, and they would have to take it from us. Loose puck at center ice. The Irish have it. Lee comes in, takes the shot. Ruben, they score! We've been saying it all game is just get pucks to the net. So we threw a great shot on net. And the puck was just laying in the crease. And it seemed like forever it took me to get there. But, uh, you know, I got there and was fortunate enough to put it in the net. And Notre Dame leads 2 to nothing. <laughs> Miami gains control. Here's a shot from the high side safe. Rebound, they score. Murphy taps home. And Miami back to it in 2-1. to one. You know, we went through a tough game on, on Friday night where we gave up a goal within a, a minute or two of the first goal. Come on, we gotta answer the bell, let's go! When Miami scored to make it two to one, I had to remind them again that, hey, we're okay. You know, we don't have to panic. Relax. Be confident in what you're capable of. Let's not worry about giving up the next one. Let's go and score the next one. Next one does, boys, you real. Our guys responded, and that was really a huge moment for our team to be able to respond and play extremely well after Miami scored. Miami recovers. They'll quickly move it to center ice. They'll dub it in the Irish zone. We're down to three. We're down to two. We're down to one. And the Fighting Irish win in the Windy City. It's 
standing on the ice at the end of the game, looking around and seeing all your teammates happy and hugging and high-fiving and looking up in the stands and you see our band out there playing our victory song. You're just speechless. You're, you're taking in everything and you don't, really don't know what to think of it because you've never experienced anything like it before in your life. After the game, I was just trying to take it all in for the last time. You never know when you're going to get another opportunity like that. All right, Jonesy. We're definitely a lucky team. And I'm a, I'm a lucky guy to say that I played in an environment like that and just wanted to take it in one last time. Point nine. Leaving that rink and coming out the field really kind of just let it all out. Woo! A little bit of relief knowing that we've pulled this game off and got to enjoy it. And just the way it all went down was pretty special. We played the game the way we need to play the game if we want to be a great team. And there's time for us to still be a great team. I'm extremely proud of you, and I want to make sure that the other three teams down the hallway can hear us. Hey, last thing is, those gold helmets are one and all. Let's get it. After we got the win, just knowing that you can look back and you don't have to say, oh, what we lost. Getting that win definitely helped the memory stick in my mind a little longer. What about a, a hand for the support staff, Gilly and Rick staff? A lot of work. A lot of work. After the game, I think that's the time you really got to reflect on how important that win was for us. You know, you can't really take it in unless you win, and that's how I truly feel. Obviously, if you win the game, it becomes a memory a lot more so than if you lose the game. So. I think it was important for us to enjoy the overall experience. Winning the game was the most important thing.